All right, y'all, we'll be going over chapter three in mathematical reasoning, section 3B, putting numbers in perspective. So let's go to my screen so we can start writing these notes. So it's dealing with how we can write large and small numbers. So tonight's topic will be writing large and small numbers. Now I'm talking really large, like the mass of the earth of how much it weighs or really small numbers, like how much does the electron weigh? That's very, very small. So to write large and small numbers, we use what we call scientific notation. So scientific notation. So that's a format or a style in which a number is expressed as a number between one and ten multiplied by a power of 10. So what they mean by a power of 10 is it'll be multiplied by 10 to some kind of exponent. That would be a power of 10, multiplying 10 times itself ever how many times the exponent says. And then they're saying it's gonna be a number in front of that between one and 10. So you can have one times 10 to the whatever, two times 10 to the whatever, 2.5, 2.5 is still between one and 10, okay? So you'll see as we do these examples. So the first thing we wanna do is learn how to convert to scientific notation. So how do I convert a number into scientific notation? So we got step one. Step one, I'm gonna move the decimal point to come after the first non-zero digit. Okay, because remember, if it starts with a zero point something, zero is not between one and 10. So it's gotta be a non-zero digit that is the first number, and then you'll put that decimal behind it. So step two, so step one, moving that decimal. Step two, for the exponent or power of 10, See, because that step one was just doing this, finding a number between the one and 10. Now we got to figure out what kind of exponent we're going to put on R times 10. So for our exponent, use the number of places moved um, by the decimal plate. So moved by the decimal point um, all right, so now decimal point, the power check this out. the power is positive if the decimal is moved left. So if I start with it on the right and I have to move my decimal left, my exponent 
is positive. Else, if you move if it moved right, then the power is negative. So that'd be like something like 0 0.00002. If I move that decimal right to put it behind my two, then my exponent on my power will be negative. And I just count how many times it moved, okay? So let's do some examples of converting to scientific notation. So my first example, I got 3,042. So when there's not a decimal shown, it is automatically behind the last number, okay? So my decimal is at the very back. Now, let's see. I'm gonna move the decimal one, two, three spots. So the decimal is now 3.042. So it's behind the first non-zero number, which was the three. So then you write times 10, and now we gotta figure out the exponent. So let's see, we moved it one, two, we moved it three times, and we moved left. So since we moved left, we said the exponent would be positive. So this is like 3.042 times 10 to the third. Well, 10 to the third would be a one with three zeros. So that'd be a thousand. So basically three times a thousand is going to give you 3000 and something, right? So I'll sort of show you what the exponents are really saying about these numbers, but this is shorthand, okay? All right, number two, zero point zero 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 one two. So I'm starting with my decimal way up here. And remember, I need to move the decimal behind the first non zero number. So this one's going to have to move right to get to a number. So I went one, two, three four units to the right. So since all these zeros are in front, I do not have to write them in my scientific notation. I got to start with the first non-zero number, which is a one. So this will be 1.2 times 10. And there's no other numbers after two, so I don't have to write nothing after my two, okay? So now we did what? One, two, three, four moves. So I put my four and we said here, if we moved right, the exponent is negative. So remember 10 to the negative fourth is like 0 0.0001, which would be what your uh, tens, hundreds, thousands, 10 thousandths. So that'd be 10 thousandths with the TH at the end. All right, then number three was 226 times 10 to the second. So you're looking at that and it, it, it's like, it looks like it's in scientific notation, but guess what? In this form, the decimals after the six and to be in scientific notation, the first number has to be where the decimal follows, right? We got to move it behind the first non-zero number, which is that two. So what you do, we're going to move it one, two units to the left. Now we already got a two here. So what we do is we bring over 2.26 times 10. Now what we do, since we moved left, we would add two to the exponent. If we move right, we would subtract two. So we moved right. So add two to the exponent. So two plus two makes that a 10 to the 
fourth, okay? That makes sense because 226 times 10 to the second, which is 100, would give me 2,260, which is what this is telling me because remember, 10 to the fourth is a one with four zeros, right? All right, so I would have 26,600, okay? All right, so that was converting to scientific notation. Next, we're going to learn how to convert from scientific notation. Okay, so I'm a little high on that. So let me bring that down just a little. So I'm going to convert from scientific notation into what we call standard form. So step one, the power of 10 tells how many times to move the exponent. Okay, if positive, that's where I'm in. If positive, move exponent right. If negative, so I'm talking about the exponent. If it's negative, you're going to move exponent left. So if you're moving it left and it's larger than a negative one, you're going to have to add zeros, okay? So step two, if moving the decimal creates open spaces, Fill them with zeros. And it's sort of like I was telling you, if you're moving it left and your first number is a two and your exponent is a negative three, then you're going to move once, but then you got to add two zeros to move it the other two times, okay? All right, so let me see what I got on this now. So we're going to do examples of converting from scientific notation into standard form. So first I got 4.01 times 10 to the second power. So this is positive, so I would move the decimal right two places. So if I move it right two places, it goes behind the one. And since the decimal is behind the last number, you don't have to write it. And I just get 401. So 4.01 times 10 squared, which is 100, zero, zero, which is 100. So 4 times 100 is 401, if you did the 0.01, okay? Oh, 3.6 times 10 to the 6. So this is an example of moving right and having to add zeros. Because watch this. That's 1. I would add a zero, that's two. Add a zero, that's three. Add a zero, that's four. Add a zero, that's five. Add a zero, that is six. So if you notice, basically that's the hundreds, that's the thousands, that's the millions. So 3.6 times a million it's going to give you three million six. Let me see. Yeah, six hundred thousand. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I moved it right, so I had to move right because of that positive exponent. Okay. So if it's negative, we're going the other way. And guess what? I got my negative one next, 3.7 times 10 
to the negative three. So negative exponents, I move to the left. So let's see what's going to happen. I move it once. I'm going to have to add a zero to move my second time. I'm going to have to add a zero to move it my third time. Now, since the decimal comes before the zero, I got to keep it and I got to keep all my zeros so that I get a point zero zero three seven. See, when you go negative, these zeros are what we call placeholders. And then these zeros are what we call placeholders. Okay. So let's see, that's the tenths, hundreds with H's, thousands, ten thousandths, okay? All righty, y'all, so we can also use scientific notation on operations. So these will be operations with scientific notation. So we'll start out, we'll multiply and divide, then we will add and subtract. So usually on these, they'll write them in parentheses. So six times 10 to the second multiplied by four times 10 to the fifth. So what you do on these is you multiply the numbers times themselves. So that would be six, times four and behind it I would multiply the powers of ten but remember when you multiply powers of ten you take the ten and you add these exponents so that'll be a two plus five okay so that's going to be the power and then this will be the number in front so watch this, six times four is 24 times 10. Oh, I need to put my times in the middle of that. My bad, y'all, put the times in between the parentheses. And then bring down the 10, and then two plus five give me seven. Now remember, I'm not done with that because my decimal is back here, and it needs to be behind the first number, which is the two. So that's going to be a 2.4 times 10. And remember, if I move the decimal left, I add one to the exponent, which makes that a eight. So my final answer would be 2.4 times 10 to the eight. Now y'all watch this, I'll show you. On your calculator, right here above what should be a comma, in blue is an EE. -E. So if you hit the second button and the comma, it brings out the EE. -E. So watch what I do. To write these numbers on the calculator, you hit six and then you get the EE -E button and then you put the exponent, which would be a two. So to the calculator, the EE -E means times 10. So you put in your number, EE, -E, then the exponent. Then you come out and do times, and then you do the second one, you do four, EE, -E, five. So that means four times 10 to the fifth. When we hit enter, it'll give us these answers. And it should give it to us in scientific notation. So let's see, six, second, comma. See how it brought up the E? Then I put in my two. Then we're gonna multiply. So multiply is right here. Then I'm gonna put my second number, which is four second comma for my E, and that exponent was a five. So you put the numbers and the exponents after the E. When you hit enter, I got a big number, right? So let's see, I think if we hit second EE -E on that, nope, it ain't giving it to me in scientific notation. Let me think what I can do. Let me go to mode and put this on sci for scientific notation. I think that's what I need to do. So clear that. All right, so let me put in that number again. Six 
second comma two times four second comma five enter and there I go I get my 2.4 times 10 to the eighth so remember to make the calculator do scientific notation when you first get it it's on normal so what I did I hit the mode button right here on the top I went right to scientific and highlighted that by hitting the enter then just clear the screen and now when you're doing these kind of problems it'll give you the answers in scientific notation like you need it knows to move that decimal and add one to those answers all right how about this uh 4.2 times 10 to the negative 2 over 8.4 times 10 to the negative fifth so to do this, I do the same thing like multiplying. I would divide my numbers and then subtract my exponent since I'm dividing. So I would do 4.2 over 8.4 times 10. On top is what? 10 to the negative 2. On bottom is 10 to the negative 5. So let's see what we get. If we do the 4.2, 4.2 divided by 8.4, that gives me, okay, 5 times 10 to the negative first would be 0.5. But if you want that in fraction form, you would hit math and enter. I got what, a one half? Well, y'all, let me see what I want to do. Okay, so let's leave it in decimal form. So watch this, math, let's go to the second option, decimal, because I want this in decimal form since we're doing scientific notation. Oh, okay, watch this, mode, back to normal. Clear that screen, enter. So now I get 0.5, that's what I was wanting, times 10. So let's see, what is negative two minus negative five? Negative two, minus negative five equals three. So that's going to be a positive three on that exponent. But remember, I can't leave my answer as a 0.5, so I would move the decimal right once. And if I move the decimal right, remember, I got to subtract one from the exponent. I move left, I add, I move right, I subtract one. So my final answer will be five times 10 to the second power, okay? Now, watch this on the calculator. I'd put the top in parentheses. Anytime you got fractions like this, put the top in parentheses. So it's 4.2 second comma to get my exponent of a negative two close parentheses then that's divided by so remember the, the fraction bar means divide and then the bottom number put it in parentheses you got 8.4 second comma e on that one is a negative five close parentheses now watch when i give you the answer it's probably going to give me what 500 but 500 is equal to so watch this, 500, if you wanted to write it in scientific notation, move the decimal left two. So since I moved it left two, I would get 5.0, or just five, times 10. I moved left, so that makes that a positive exponent. Also, you can do what, mode, hit scientific real quick, clear that, hit enter, and there's your five times 10 to the second. So notice on the answers, they give you the exponents, okay? The E means the times 10 part. All right, so let's do some adding or subtracting. So this one has three times 10 to the six plus three times 10 to the second. So y'all really the easiest way to do these is to put your mode on normal 
and convert these into normal numbers, then add them. So remember, three times 10 to the six means you got a three, and you got to move the decimal right six times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that looks like that gives me three million. Plus three times 10 to the second would be three. Move the decimal right twice, and that would make a 300. Then you would add those together, right? So that would be 3 million, and then the 300 would add at the end. So I get 3 million, 300, okay? But now I wanna write this answer back in scientific notation. So let's see, the decimal's back here, right? So I'm gonna move it one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna move it six times. So that would give me a 3.000, Three. Now I don't have to write the last two zeros because they're just placeholders or they're, they have no meaning since they're after the three. But these ones I need because they're placeholders, okay? Now that'll be times 10. So let's say I went one, two, three, four, five, six times we said. So I went left, positive six. Now, calculator. Um, I'm on normal now. Um, calculator, three, second comma for the E6, plus three, second comma for the E2. Hit enter, and it would probably give you this big number. Convert it back to scientific notation real quick, or hit the mode, hit scientific, clear that, and then hit enter, and it will give you this answer, okay? All right, subtraction. I'll do one with subtraction because that one was addition and I said either or. So here comes the subtraction. 4.6 times 10 to the ninth minus 5 times 10 to the eighth. So once again, that'd probably be, be easier to write it out. So write down to 4.6. So there's one move. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's see, I moved it from behind the four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Big number. So let me break that up. So hundreds, thousands, millions. So I got 4.6 billion basically minus five. The decimal's here, so I got to add eight zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that'd be easy to knock out on the calculator, right? Four, six, zero, 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 zero. So I needed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Minus five. Let's see what this was. Hundreds, thousands. So that's just 500 million. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, hit enter. I get four, one, and let's see how many zeros. One, two, three, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros. So let's turn that into scientific notation. We move it left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's going to be. 4.1, so I don't need all these zeros that come at the end, remember, times 10, and we move that, what we say, nine times. So since we moved it left, it is positive. Now, here's something cool about adding and subtracting. If both numbers have the same powers of 10. So if they're both 10 squared or they're both 10 to the fifth, watch what we can do. So I'm going to have seven times 10 to the 10th plus four times 10 to the 10th. It's almost like adding fractions. These 10 to the 10ths are almost like a common denominator. 
So what you would do, seven plus four would be the first number. And then that would be times 10 to the 10th. So since these powers match up, the answer automatically has that power. So watch what you do. Seven plus four is 11 times 10 to the 10th. At that moment, they still got the same power, right? Oh, but guess what? That's not written in scientific notation because the decimal is right there at the moment. We need to move that decimal one unit to the left. So that's a 1.1 .1 times 10. Since I moved it left one, I add one to my exponent so that it becomes an 11. But notice, I didn't change the exponent until I moved that decimal, okay? When I added, they both had the same exponent. Now, had this been 3 plus 4 and made that a 7, the decimal would have been in the right place, and I would have left that a 10 to the 10. It's only because I had 11 here, and I had to move my decimal. All right, so this last one I wanted to show you again, but I wanted to show you this one on my calculator again. So this one is 2.3 times 10 to the negative 12 minus 1.6 times 10 to the negative 12. Whoops, I ran into my other problem. So 2.3 times 10 to the negative 12. Let me write that again. I didn't know I was hitting that up there, y'all minus 1.6 times 10 to the negative 12. So wrote it over. So this one we know on the first step would have 10 to the negative 12. So that would be my answer at the moment. What I got to figure out is what 2.3 minus 1.6 equals. So in the front would be the 2.3 minus the 1.6, okay? So I'm going to minus that 2.3 minus 1.6 is going to give me 0.7 times 10 to the negative 12. So just like we'll go, that first step have the same exponent, but then you can't leave it as a 0.7. That decimal has to come behind that first number. So that'll be seven times 10. Now remember, anytime you move the decimal right, I move the decimal right, right? What am I going to do? I'm going to subtract one. Okay, up here, it was on the right and I moved it left. I added one. This one's on the left. I moved it right. I subtract one. And negative 12 minus one is a negative 13. Now, I'll tell you, since everything's in scientific notation on this one, I would probably do my calculator mode to scientific and enter on that and then clear that screen. So watch this, 2.3 second comma negative 12. That's the exponent minus the second one was 1.6 second comma negative 12. So they matched up and watch it knows to do the answer right. And I got seven times 10 to the negative 13. Hey y'all, so let me tell you about the last little section here. The last little section talks about what we call magnitude of numbers. And they just want you to know what do these exponents mean. So anytime you have stuff like 10 to the zero, that is what we call the ones units, okay? Which equals the ones. 10 to the first is what we call the tens unit, and that would equal 10. Then you got what? 10 squared, which is the hundreds. That's equal 10 squared is a hundred, 10 times 10. All right, 10 to the third is the thousands. That is one with three zeros. So whatever that exponent is, is how many zeros I'm writing. 10 to the fourth 
would be the ten thousands. That'd be a one with four zeros. What's next? Hundred thousands would be ten to the fifth. So that'd be one with five zeros. All right, 10 to the six is the millions. Then 10 to the seven is the 10 millions. 10 to the eight is the hundred millions. And then y'all, it starts with the billions. The billions, 10 billions, hundred billions. And that's how many zeros you're adding after those ones going that way, okay? So magnitude, if I had a number like 2.3 times 10 to the eighth, basically that means we have 2.3 hundred millions, okay? So we just want you to understand that 10 to the eighth is a large number. That's hundred millions. That is a one with eight zeros behind it, okay? And that's what they mean by magnitude of the numbers. They magnify by 10 each time you go up. One times 10, 10 times 10, 100 times 10, 1,000 times 10, and so on as you keep going, okay? All right, oh, this one had four zeros. I accidentally wrote five, y'all. This one had the five. That was 10 thousands, so that is four zeros. Somehow I wrote five on there. I get zoned out sometimes. All right, so what I wanted to do on this lecture is go over some of these homework problems from 3B, okay? So number one, You're going to decide whether the following statement makes sense or is clearly true or does not make sense and is clearly false. So they're going to give you a problem like this. I'm doing number one. We're going to decide if it makes sense or if it's really false. So I read a book that had 10 to the fifth words. So remember 10 to the fifth is a one with five zeros. So one, two, three, four, five. So does it make sense to read a book with 100,000 words? So they gave you, it makes sense because it is possible for a book to contain, what is this? Hundreds, thousands, millions, a hundred billion. Well, we didn't say that was a hundred billion. So that is false. This one said it makes sense because it's possible to read a hundred thousand words. Well, that's what we said. This one says it does not make sense because you can't read a book with 100,000 words. Well, I believe we can. And this one, once again, did what? Hundreds, thousands, a hundred billion when it was 100,000. So I went with B on that because we actually figured it out was 100,000, okay? All right, what's this? I live in an apartment building that is 200 feet tall. Does that make sense, 200 feet tall? Well, let's think, if the average floor is around, what, 10 feet? 200 feet divided by 10 floors would give me, oh, what's that, uh, tw uh, 20 floors? Well, I've seen 20 floor apartment buildings. Okay, so there are apartment buildings that could be 200 feet tall. And then that says, no, because you can't have nothing that big. And this one says it don't make sense because they're much taller than 200 feet. Well, not all of them. Some can be shorter. Depends on the floors. But I think it's around 10 feet of floor, I would guess. Maybe a little more. Okay. But yeah, I said it made sense because I can see one being about 200 feet. All right, y'all, so number three here, so we can get on number three now. They want me to convert each of the numbers from scientific to ordinary or standard form. So for 3A, I got five times 10 to the seventh. 
So converting this to scientific notation, uh, to normal form, I would write my five and then move the decimal right seven times. So remember the decimal's here. So I got to add a zero. Looks like seven of them, right? Cause I'm adding as many zeros as I'm moving. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. And if I write that out, that looks like 50 million. And writing that would be 50 million. Cause it's in the seventh spot, which would we said was the millions, right? <coughs> All right, so let's see what's next. B, 6.9 times 10 to the fifth. So once again, I would write my six to move this decimal from left of the six to the right is one move. So I got four more moves because I had to do five altogether. So that was one. So the last four moves, I'm going to have to add four zeros. So one, two, three, four, five moves. So I'll put that comma right there. So this looks like what? 690,000. So 690,000. All right, next for C, so this had A, B, C, D on it. Four times 10 to the negative two. So you know I had to do some with negative exponents. So remember, when you write the four, the decimal starts out behind the four. Negative exponent means I move left. So I would move one time, and then I would have to add a zero to move that second time. So that I get a 0 .04, 0 .04. Four. So let's see what unit that is. That's the tenths with a th. That's the hundredths with a th. So this would be four hundredths with the th. So decimals get the th. Big numbers get the ending, and that's it. All right, D. I said I had seven point six times ten to the negative four. So negative exponent, I gotta move left again. So I'm gonna move left once. So that takes care of one move. So I got three more. So I'm gonna add zero three times to move those other three decimal places. So I'm gonna get a point zero, 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 seven, six. So let's see, there's your tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. So this would be 76 hundred thousandths with a TH because it is a decimal. All right, so those you had to rewrite and say what they mean. Number four, we're going to write these numbers in scientific notation. So I got my first one is a 610. So move the decimal behind the zero to behind the six. So this will be 6.1. Now remember, you don't have to write any zeros at the end. Okay, if they follow a number. So that'll be 6.1 times 10. I move the decimal left. So that is a positive two. So 610 is equal to 6.1 times 100, which is 10 squared. All right, B, I'm going to write right here. Zero point one two. Four zeros, one, two, three, four, and then a four, four, eight. So I have a zero point, zero, 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 four, four, eight. So let's see, we're gonna move that decimal. One, two, three, four, five. I stopped there because it's behind the first non-zero number. So 
So that's 4.48 times 10. Now, since I moved the decimal right, one, two, three, four, five times, my exponent is negative. So big numbers have positive exponents. Little bitty numbers like 0 .000 stuff have negative exponents. All right, this one had a C, which was 48,029. All right, so let's see the decimals here. So I'm going to move it one, two, three, four units to the left. So I get 4.8029 times 10. Remember, I moved one, two, three, four units left. So that is a positive four. All right, y'all, so let's see what's next. All right, so when you're doing number five here, these are, looks like I got a little bit of multiplying, of adding, and a dividing, so one of each. So here comes the multiply, two times 10 to the four times, four times 10 to the fifth. So remember on multiplying, you take the numbers and you multiply them. So two times four goes into first parentheses, or that can be the X for multiplying. And then it's times 10 exponents. Since the bases match, we add the four plus the five to get the exponent. So same bases add the exponents. So let's see what we get. Two times four is eight times 10, four plus five is nine. All right, let's see what would I do to B. B, that was A. B is 3 times 10 to the fifth plus 5 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, so let me, I'm getting high again. So I mean, up high on the writing. So remember, this right problem is right here. So what I would do to these, since these ain't the same bases, when you add them, you would rewrite them. So three with five zeros, which looks like 300,000, plus a five with four zeros. So the exponent tells me how many zeros. So 300,000 plus 50,000 equals 350,000. So let's write that as a scientific notation. I'm gonna move the decimal from at the end to behind the first non-zero number, which is a 3.5 times 10. Remember, I don't need all these zeros at the end when I'm in decimal form. And I moved it, what, one, two, three, four, five times? So that'd be times 10 to the fifth, okay? Which is my 100,000, right? All right, y'all, so the C for five is division eight times 10 to the eighth divided by four times 10 to the third. So division, I would take the top eight divided by the four times 10 and then the exponent, when you divide, you subtract. So that would be eight minus the three, okay? It's always the first exponent minus the second. So what's eight divided by four? That's two times 10. Eight minus three is five. Now remember, any of these you could do on that calculator using that E button, okay? All right, so I'm gonna rewrite the following statement using a number in scientific notation. So this is number six. So they're giving me the diameter of a certain bacterium is about 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros and a seven meters. So very, very small. So writing that in scientific notation, I would move my decimal one, two, three, four, five, six units, because it's got to be behind the first number. OK, 
Okay. So I moved it six units to the right. So that'll be seven. Or you don't even need the zeros after that. That'd be times 10. So let's see how many times we moved it. One, two, three, four, five, six times. So that'll be a negative six since I moved right. Okay. All right, let's see. That was it on that. Let me see. Now I need, what, a seven? Make an order of magnitude estimate of the following quantity. So they're giving me the number of times the average person's heart beats in a day. So a day is a long time. So the first one said, uh, so I got four choices on that. A was 86,400. And they got that by one heartbeat per second. So one beat per second. My second choice, 1440. That was one heartbeat a minute. So one beat per minute is how they got that number. 8640 is uh, once every 10 seconds, once every 10 seconds. And then they got 432,000 by doing five times a second. So five beats a second. So dun, 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 dun. I would go with one beat per second. I don't think it's one beat per minute. I don't think it's one beat every 10 seconds. And I don't think it's five beats per second. So I would choose the 86, 400. And let's see, number eight, they're telling me there's 3.6 million deaths per year. So million deaths per year in this country A. Express this quantity in deaths per minute. Okay. So the first thing I do would turn 3.6 million into a number. And 3.6 millions means 3.6 times 10 to the six, right? That's my millions. So that would be a three, move it right six times. So that's one. And then the other five are going to be zeros. So let's see, that would be 3,600,000 3, is the same as 3.6 times 10 to the six. So that's deaths per year. Remember, per means divide, so the year has to be on top. And this is the number of deaths, okay? So deaths per year. We're converting that to, what did I say? Deaths per minute. So let's think about this. A year, you got one year. One year is equal to 365 days. One day equals 24 hours and one hour equals 60 minutes. So I'm finally from the years to the minutes. I got to use a few cancellations on the way. So here we go. Since years on the bottom, I put it on top and I put my 365 days on the bottom. Now I've got to cancel the days. So to cancel the days, I'm going to turn it into hours. So since days on the bottom, the one day goes on top, 24 hours goes to the bottom. Now I need to turn the hours into minutes. So the hours on bottom, I need to put it on top. And the 60 minutes goes to the bottom. So notice, years cancel, days cancel, hours cancel. So to get my final answer will be deaths per minute. So my final answer will be deaths per minute. So let's see, we take the top, which is 303 million. Let me turn on. 3,600,000 and we divide that by everything on the bottom. So divide by 365, get that answer. 
divide by the 24, get that answer. Divide by the 60, get that answer. So look, I'm getting around 6.849. Now in the answer, they round me to round at one decimal place. So rounding that one decimal place will be the eight. And since that's a four after the eight, I'll leave it at eight. And this is 6.8 deaths per minute. Hey, so there's a trick on these is just getting your conversions over here. You got to go from what they give you to what you need. And sometimes it takes three or four conversions to get there. Okay. Had they wanted me to figure out deaths per day, well, that would have been quick. I'd have put one year, 365 days, divided once and been done, okay? All right, y'all, here comes number nine. Restate the following fact as indicated. So approximately 31,700 citizens, 31,700 citizens died in automobile accidents in 2015. Express that as deaths per day. So deaths per day. So they're giving me years. So 31,700 deaths per year. And I know the conversion for years to days, we did that while go. One year equals 365 days. So remember, yours is on bottom, so you put that on top, and your 365 days on the bottom. Years cancel. Now I have my deaths per day, which is what they wanted. So on that one, I would do 31,700 divided by the 365. Now let me see how they want this written. Oh, let me get my mode out of scientific. So I'm going to hit enter on normal, clear the screen, hit enter. So I'm getting 86.849. They want me to round to the nearest whole number. So 86.849, the nearest whole number is whatever number's in front of that decimal. So that's a six, but behind it is an eight. So we round that six up to a 87. All right, y'all, the last one on these, and then I'll let y'all go, has... At the end of the year, the gross debt of a country stood at 18 trillion. Express this amount in dollars per person. Assuming that the population is 310 million. So it looks like what I'm going to do is this is per nation. To get per million, I'm going to divide that 18 trillion by that 310 million. So 18 trillion, woo, trillions, here we go. There's my thousands, millions, billions, trillions, right? There we go, hundreds, thousands, millions, billions, trillions. We're going to divide that by 310 million. So there's 310,000, 310 million. All right, so here we go. 18 with one, three, six, nine, 12 zeros. Divided by a 31 with seven zeros equals gives me 58064.516. Now this one, they want you to round to the nearest hundred. The nearest hundred, ones, tens, hundreds. They didn't add a TH behind that, okay? This is hundreds with the TH. They said hundreds. Hundreds is where the zero is. So the number added after it is bigger or equal to a five. So this is five, eight, one, zero, zero. Remember after that one, I don't have to write no more zeros. And I definitely, I got to keep these two for placeholders. But since the decimal is now here, 
I do not have to write all the zeros after that decimal, okay? All right, y'all, so that looks like your lesson for 3B, okay? So I'm gonna end this recording. So stop my share. I'm gonna end this recording and see y'all later. Y'all have a good